In this video, we're diving into the basic refrigerant circuit, a cornerstone of cooling systems, both refrigeration and air conditioning. Let's start with two fundamental principles. First, heat moves from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. This is why a hot cup of coffee cools down in a cold room. Heat moves from the higher temperature coffee out into the room, and this decreases the temperature of the coffee. Heat only stops moving once the temperature of the coffee and the room are exactly the same. Second, the relationship between pressure and temperature is key. Higher pressure means higher temperature, and vice versa. These principles guide the entire refrigeration process and will help you understand what's happening inside the system. Our goal is to move heat from a place we don't want it to a place where it doesn't bother us. In refrigeration, this means moving it away from the food to the space outside of the refrigerator or the freezer. For an air conditioner, this means cooling a space by moving heat from inside the building to outside the building. The ideal gas law tells us that the pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas are all related. When we compress a gas, its pressure and temperature rise, and when we decrease pressure, the temperature drops. This simple concept is at the heart of how air conditioning and refrigeration systems work, specifically by pressurizing and depressurizing the refrigerant, which is the gas inside the system that can also turn into a liquid, and back to a gas again. When heat is moved and the temperature changes, this is called sensible heat, and we can measure this type of heat exchange with a thermometer. Sensible heat changes the temperature of an object without changing its state, like from liquid to vapor or vapor to liquid. Latent heat, on the other hand, changes the state without changing the temperature, like when water boils. It absorbs heat but remains at 212 degrees Fahrenheit until it all becomes steam. We use this latent heat in the refrigerant circuit to move more heat more quickly when the refrigerant boils or condenses. The word latent just means hidden because we can't measure it with a thermometer. but we know that the heat is contributing to the change from liquid to gas or boiling or gas to liquid, otherwise known as condensing. Now let's look at the refrigeration cycle, starting with the compressor. It compresses the refrigerant. This means it squeezes the molecules of refrigerant together, increasing its pressure and temperature. Think of it as the heart of the system, pumping the refrigerant through the circuit, and for now, also think of it as a pressure increaser. The condenser is the heat rejector, the metering device is the pressure decreaser or the pressure dropper, and the evaporator is the heat absorber. So one more time, compressor is the pressure increaser, condenser is the heat rejector, the metering device is the pressure decreaser, and the evaporator is the heat absorber. Remember, for heat to be absorbed, the evaporator must be a lower temperature than the air moving over it because heat moves from hot to cold. For the condenser to reject heat, it must be hotter than the air moving over it. 
Back to the compressor again. As the refrigerant enters the compressor, it is a cool vapor, and the molecules are moving pretty slow. Inside the compressor, the molecules of this cool gas get smashed together, so they move faster and get hotter. Remember, higher pressure equals higher temperature. When the refrigerant leaves the compressor, it's hot and under high pressure. This is where the condenser comes in. In the condenser, the refrigerant releases its heat to the surroundings and condenses into a liquid. This process rejects heat out of the refrigerant and changes the state from fully vapor to fully liquid. Think of the condenser as the heat rejector. And in the case of your air conditioner at home, this heat is rejected outside. This is why if you put your hand over top of a split system condenser, you'll notice that it blows hot air out. That's the heat being rejected from inside the house. The metering device then drops the pressure of the refrigerant quite dramatically. This sudden drop starts the boiling or flashing process. This cools it down even further and prepares it to enter the evaporator where the real magic happens. This metering device may be a TXV, an electronic expansion valve, a piston, or a capillary tube, or some other device, but it's always the pressure dropper or pressure decreaser. Next is the evaporator, which is the cold part of the system, where the real magic happens. Here, the cold refrigerant absorbs heat from the environment, which is the indoor air and in AC, or the heat from inside the freezer or refrigerator in refrigeration. This refrigerant actually boils or vaporizes during this process. Despite it being called boiling inside this evaporator, it does this at a much lower temperature than water does when we're boiling it on a stove. This effectively removes heat and cools the space. This is why I also call the evaporator the heat absorber. The evaporator is the part in the system that actually makes the air a lower temperature, or what we would call cold air. And it does this by absorbing heat into itself, that it then later rejects in the condenser. I want to say this again. Remember, unlike water that boils hot, the refrigerant in our system boils cold. It absorbs heat from its surroundings when it's boiling. This unique property allows refrigerants to effectively transfer heat, keeping our food fresh and our rooms comfortable. We're able to control the temperature at which refrigerant boils and condenses by changing the pressure like we discussed earlier in the video with the ideal gas law. Lower pressure equals lower temperature, higher pressure equals higher temperature. And that completes the refrigerant cycle. The vaporized refrigerant then returns to the compressor to start the process all over again. Through this continuous cycle, refrigeration and air conditioning systems provide the cooling we rely on every day. There's so much more to learn, but you just learned some fundamentals of thermodynamics, the science of moving heat, and physics, the science of stuff. So feel free to brag to your friends. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex. Bytex.